if great challenge can come great reward. We're going to spend some time this morning talking about the Guardian Ad Litem program. Now this is a network of professional staff and advocates who provide a very powerful voice for Florida's children. You too can get involved, lift up a child's voice, and lift up a child's life. I am for the child who has been abused, the child who is afraid to go home. Who thinks it's her fault, who is forced to keep the secret or else? I am for the child who has been neglected. The child who does not know where his next meal is coming from. Who must fend for herself and her little sister. Alone. 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 The child who's never been to a doctor or a dentist. I am for the child who was taken away for her own protection. The child who is now in foster care, who does not know how long he'll be there. Or who these people are, or if she should trust them. I am for her. The child who is in his third, fourth, fifth, sixth foster home this year. The child who has attended four schools in two years. Who sits in back of yet another class surrounded by strangers. Believing in his heart that no one... No one cares. I'm for her. The child who has never been told... That he is loved. That she is smart. Beautiful. Talented. Worthy. That she is strong. Courageous. That she is somebody. I am for her. The child who one day will turn 18 and will be surrendered to the world. I am for that child. So I am there for that child. To listen to her. To speak for her. To champion without compromise for what's in his best interest. Because if I am. If I am there for her, I know she will be half as likely to languish in foster care and that much more likely to find a safe, permanent home. She is the child I am for. He is the child I am for. They are the children I am for. She is the child I am for. The child I am for is him. Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? I am a volunteer child advocate. I am you. Dennis, it is a pleasure to have you back on the show this morning. Now, since we spoke last month, what successes have you had with the program? We've actually had a lot of successes, and based on just from this program, we were able to, you know, pull in five fantastic volunteers who are extraordinarily passionate about children. So that's a real win for us. Good. And now, have you also had an increase in the children involved in the program? That's been a challenge for us. I believe last month when we, we spoke, we had 144 children in the program. And just checking this morning, we have 163. New, 163. So there's been an increase in caseload. So how do you deal with that challenge, Dennis, of having that amount of children involved? Well, it's, it's juggling, and right now we're at about a, one and a half volunteers per child, which is, or one and a half children per volunteer, and some of that, what that equates to is some of our volunteers have four children, some may have one. Um, our volunteers really have stepped up and have to step up with taking, you know, the additional cases, so each of our ch children in the, in the system are represented. How are the children referred to this program? Uh, it's a sticky situation, but it typically starts with an abuse call to the abuse hotline. Um, once a call is s sent to the abuse hotline, it is routed to local DCF, uh, Department of Children and Family, and they open up an investigation. Uh, once th they have uh, established cause, uh, it is referred to the courts, and a dependency proceeding or a Chapter 39 proceeding is opened, and that is when we are referred into, or the children are refer referred to us. And uh, it's first referred to the circuit, and our director has the opportunity to accept or decline a case, but within our circuit, our cases are never declined. We believe every child deserves a voice, and our director is very, our circuit director is very passionate about that. So once assigned to the circuit, we then look for a suitable volunteer. Uh, every case is different. Uh, every volunteer has their has their strengths and weaknesses, and we look at that when we're looking at a case. Let's talk a little bit about the court proceedings. It has to be hard, Dennis, for a child who might only be 
let's say, five to ten years of mm -hmm. age to have to go through all of that, to have to go in court. Absolutely. Are they required to be there? They're not required to be in court. Um, the, the child has a, has a choice to be in court. If a, a child does not want to be in court, again, that's where the advocate will really step in and speak for the child. But a child also has a right to be in court. Um, it is, in essence, their life. And they they do get a say in what in what direction they go, so again they they have a choice to be in court, and if they want to be in court, they they are absolutely allowed to be in court. Is that typically the case? Do the children want to speak, or do you have a lot who want someone to speak for them? Yes, um, the ch older children typically want to want to speak. They want to be heard, and especially in our courts here, the judges will take them back in chambers and talk to them one-on-one -on -one to make it less scary. Mm -hmm. Again, the volunteers with them, uh, but we try in every facet, try to make it easier on the child. Uh, now the younger children, no. Mm -hmm. um, we, are, we are conscious of their age, we're conscious of, of their understanding and their capability to understand, so we, a lot of times for the younger children, we are their, we are their constant voice. Mm -hmm. That support that those children have, that, that means everything, I'm sure, to yes. them. Dennis, how long are you involved in a child's life, the advocates of the Guardian Ad Litem program? This is where we, we step back into the dependency realm. Once a dependency case has been established, it's typically 12 months from when the case plan was written and agreed upon. Um, and that can come anywhere, that's usually a month after the dependency, so 13 months is the is best case scenario. Mm -hmm. uh, the parents have to uh, follow a case plan and they have deliverables in which they have to accomplish uh, for the child to be uh, reunified. Again, some of the children are still in the home, but they're under supervision, et cetera, of DCF and the courts. But uh, reunification is always what we're looking for. Now there's a concurrent case plan that can be opened where permanent guardianship or adoption those are more serious as when we're talking adoption, the birth parents would have to terminate their parental rights, and that's something very serious, and it's mm -hmm. never what we want to see. Mm -hmm. And then after those 13 months are over, Dennis, do you see the children again? Well, that's based on the choice of the child or alternate circumstances. Uh, many of the cases we have are revisits, we'll call them, or mm -hmm. uh, Another abuse call a call has been made, and the cases have been reopened. Uh, we do have case files dating back ten years that are still currently open, and the it's unfortunate because the files are five six inches thick. Right, right, that is unfortunate. Now, Dennis, you are always accepting more volunteers, more advocates to step up and uh, become a part of the program. Absolutely, we are always looking for more advocates. We are always looking for the special person we were talking before we got started today and I you know in this we're such a giving community here in the uh, Florida Keys uh, you know with our time with our checkbooks our time and everything but we're, again we're looking for something more valuable than donations we're looking for time mm -hmm. um, anybody can write a check uh, but it takes that special person to volunteer for children to actually give their time mm -hmm. and their time and their support and encouragement that's the greatest mm -hmm. gift they can give. It's, it's invaluable. Mm -hmm. Dennis, it's been a pleasure to have you back on this morning. Thank you so much. If you want more information on the program, check out the info on the bottom of the screen. I'm going to take a quick break right now. I'll be right back after these messages. Mm -hmm.